Let's worship song.
host normally, so I said, well, it just came to me, wouldn't it be good if I could get as many of the, you know, people of my generation that I know um, to come and um, celebrate what I call um, the 80s reunion. Reason being, my age group are the first generation um, black, black uh, people born here. And our parents, who were our pioneers, our mentors, they um, they came with great courage. Because I was saying even yesterday, I don't think now, as old as I am, that I would up sticks and go to another country and seek to make a better life. But our parents did. And what was striking as well, they were very young. Yeah. A lot of our parents were very young when they came here. Left their parents, sometimes left, some of them left their children and came to seek a better life. And as I observe, some of us even here have eaten with the good and the great, have sat with the, the famous and the rich, and it came about from very humble beginnings. Like my father, he came on a boat, he didn't actually, he couldn't afford the extra 10 pounds to um, pay for a, a ticket to get on a plane. So he was 16 days at sea, and he felt he was just absolutely sick of seeing the sea, but God allowed him to, to reach here, and to have all of us, his children, yeah. and likewise your parents, whatever way they came, they came in, you know, humility, they came in their droves, but, you know, it's so good to remember so I want to remember the things that are done, in spite of the things that are, yeah. the things that are that are good, the things that have been done. Yeah. We, it is good to give God thanks, um, you know, for it. And um, as I said, I'd like to even thank Pastor Scott at this time for giving me the opportunity and the privilege. Yeah. There's not a lot of us here. I did invite quite a few people. I'm praying that they will come. I know it's Saturday and everyone's very busy. But you know, let us continue and graciously allow the Lord to minister to us as we minister to the, to, to, the, um, to Christ, that he will minister back to us. When we praise, when we worship, when we um, give adoration to God, it's that he in turn will give back to us. Many of us have got voices, great voices, great gifts. So I, I am very blessed to know a lot of gifted people. And um, you know we're, we're coming here to <coughs> honour the Lord, honour our parents and give God thanks for where we are. We've got a generation behind us and our generation are having their own children. So um, you know there has to be a good legacy that has to be left and we need to leave a good legacy Amen. so that um, those who are behind will have someone to um, hold on to. Some of us, mm, the discipline was really tough. The, you know, those of us born here, we know it was really, really hard sometimes. And but what I looked at as well that many there was droves of us in the seventies, loads, loads of young people, eighties, and, and coming up. Um, a lot left, but a lot also stayed. Amen. And you know, I want to give God thanks. You know, some of you have known like thirty odd years, twenty odd years, and you know, um, some put on my Facebook page. After all these years, we're still standing tall. And it's the grace of God why we are here. Yes. I'd like to just welcome a few people. I just saw um, Julian Fletcher. The Lord bless her. Thank you for coming. I'd like to, to come up here, actually. Come up because it's in the fire. God bless you. Can you give her a hand, please? Um, I, Juliet doesn't actually know me as such, but I know her. Um, the, back in the days um, when uh, I, I, we met up with her, back in the days when LCGC was very green, and um, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of us have come very far. You've got the likes of um, Bishop Francis. All of us were like the young people on the circuit, running up and down, you know, trying to trying to serve the Lord in the best way we could. And uh, the Lord has really, you know, allowed some of us to get very, very far. And you know, we can't forget what God has done. And we also need to draw back on where we've come from. Because if we forget, if you have no foundation, you just can't, your building can't stand. Amen. If you don't connect wires to, to a circuit board, you should know that, you, you won't have any power. And likewise, if we don't connect to the Heavenly Father, forget it. 
38 is not happening. And you know, we want to give glory to God for, you know, as I said, our parents, first generation, um, us, second generation, but first generation born here, uh, brought up, and the system didn't always go down well with our parents because they had a way of doing things, and we always questioned and wondered, uh, what was that? What's that? What's that? But at the end of the day, some of us are parents now, and we're realizing what our parents said is what we're actually saying as well. Yeah. And uh, it's a cycle, it just repeats yeah. itself. And there's, uh, I think it's uh, in Ecclesiastes, it says there's nothing new under the sun. And it, it just isn't. There is a and human nature, it's of such a sign. We all cry, we all sleep, we all laugh. Well, you know, we should laugh anyway. And, you know, um, we're creatures of habit. And it's not hard to observe somebody when they're sad. It's not hard to observe somebody when they're really happy. It's not hard to observe somebody who's really in a bit of bother. And at the end of the day, we still need God. We still need the Spirit of the Lord to help us. And, you know, I did have a program in my mindset, but there are a few people that aren't here. But I'd like um, to start off, um, there's a version of Here I Am to Worship by a lady called Heather Headley. And um, I found, I have found that this song has really been a blessing to me. Constant, constant blessing. And I'd like to minister it in Jesus. Thank you. 
that reunion and, and getting together and remembering. And I'm, I'm very much into remembering the past because we, we owe it. Um, I want to greet the pastor of church who I've known over many years and the one Holy Spirit who has enlivened us in the faith to continue the walk of these years. And I want to acknowledge the elder of my church is there, one of the greatest musicians ever in this country on the next door. And he knows, as I tell him all the time, that elder was, you know, one of the royal families of um, churches and gospel music here. Um, uh, I, 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 I'm not quite sure if I'm prepared <laughs> theoretically to, to see. If I can get a little cup of warm wish water, I'd be very grateful. Um, but uh, just bear with me a couple of minutes as I, as I talk about um, this whole thing to do with our heritage and the legacy. Because I think it's absolutely important. And why is it important? Well, maybe when you get to my kind of age, that the past seems to <laughs> reoccur in your mind much more. But really, when you think about it, particularly those of us, as we've been said, who are the first born of our parents who came here, we look at what God has done for us as a people. We know sort of all of the history, the social history, the whole thing to do with slavery, the whole fact that, that we, we wouldn't have a Caribbean if it, with, with our African people in it if there hadn't been that transatlantic. Uh, experience that our forefathers had, the, the, the horrible things that took place. But out of all of that tragedy has become has come a, a great triumph. And that triumph extends its way all the way into what Jesus Christ had intended for all of mankind. Isn't that right? Because he said he's called out people from every tongue, every people, every nation. And we're here in this very uh, this country where many of the nations of the world are, and we're making our mark as an African Caribbean people, we're making our mark, and our buildings are making its mark. We own the buildings, we've worked hard, we took out the money out of our pockets, and we, we contributed to establishment of buildings. And you know what? We're now we're unmovable as a people. We're part of the fabric. And so we've got a, a lot to give our thanks for that we're here in this nation to be part of the spiritual life of this nation. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about the, the heritage and the legacy that we've got. And that music is such an important part of that. If that music has led the way, music has led the way, it will continue to lead the way. Um, I remember when those days when we first started out doing gospel music and uh, you know, it, it was a thought of right to have paying pay concerts in church, you know, where you pay to come in. In fact, Dougie was the reason why it really got moving in my church, because um, we wanted to raise the money for our church. And uh, Pastor Wallace had just become the pastor of our church not very long. And we had a meeting and it was like, how are we going to raise this money? Let's have a concert. Oh, we're going to have a concert, but how are we going to make the money? Will people buy the ticket? They never agreed to that, selling tickets. And, uh, and then Dad said, I'll get my dad to agree. And, you know, a light bulb went on in my head. But this is something that can become very real. In fact, the Lord, that's what the Lord put on my heart. That this kind of way of concerts and stuff will become very significant over the years. And it made me make a commitment to doing that. And, you know, now it's an everyday occurrence. <laughs> One of the first things people want to think of what I'm selling tickets to make some money, you know what I mean? Um, but, um, you know, I'm excited that God is, is finding different ways for young people, older people, every one of us to not only sing music, but to dance and to do acting. And, you know, there's now films that you can watch that give a gospel message. It's just all over the place. And God doesn't want us to be afraid of anything because why? He said, the kingdoms of this world, they have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. So every, every structure belongs to Jesus. And uh, we ought to bring righteousness to all of them. I'm going to try and sing a, a song. <laughs> Years ago I used to sing solo stuff 
and I tried this one on uh, that woman at the well. I just see this one. I think, can I come with G? I think, or oh, F. Like the woman at the well.
And she rightly said, Pastor Doug Wallace is he's, right. he's quite humble with it, very, very humble with it. But there were three right. in London, he used to be the Reverend Basil Mead, Daryl Powell, who oh, yeah. is this lady down here, <laughs> and our um, yeah. Pastor Doug Wallace. And I want to thank God for oh, Pastor Armand as well. Pastor Daryl Wallace, God bless you, thank you for coming. And um, just for those of you who wasn't here, I am. Um, I called us to um, have like an 80s reunion, remembering our fathers who came here, and um, us, the first generation, and all the things that we did when we were young people. <clears throat> 20, 25 years ago. That's quite long. So, just keeping off that because um, he's really brought us a long way. And as I said, some of us sat with the good and the great, but it's good to remember, and as you said, Julia, it's so true. If we don't remember, then all of what we do, it just, it it's just not worth it and I just want to thank God, I want to thank God for my friend Denise, thank you. She's one of two female guitarists that I know. Wow. I'm not sure, do you still play? Mm. Yeah, thank God, that's um, two female, one of two female guitarists that I know and I've known her a uh, very long while and quite a number of you I've known in a while and um, I just want to thank God again that we're all here and um, I can do that song now. But to listen to this song, wherever you can join in, please join in with me. Lord, I proclaim you now and your mighty power and your awesome majesty. I, I, uh, this song, I uh, heard it the first time in June. And it was only last weekend that I, uh, that I tuned in to, to learn it. And uh, it's, it's such a powerful song, such an awesome song. And it's... Uh, it hails from Deuteronomy chapter 32. And we've come to declare the name of the Lord. We've come to publish his, his name today because he is great.
70 years of age.
There is a, a Bishop Smith and his co-pastor from Cornwall. Um, can I ask Bishop uh, Smith to come and greet the church in Jesus' name? Thank you very much. It's very good to be with you this evening. And uh, I must say that uh, I, or this church, not here as it's present now, but many years ago with the Crescent, this was one of the first Pentecostal churches that I visited when I came to this country. Praise God. And then, so I've known Pastor or Bishop Scott for some uh, 45 years, I think. About 45 years. And when the church moved here, I went away to Cornwall, and so I've not been here for about 35 years. So it's very good to be with you. Then we have got to begin 
to prepare ourselves mm -hmm. for that pattern of living. Remember, Lazarus was a poor man. And there was also a rich man. But friends, who entered the kingdom of heaven? There are many people who have left their country, Jamaica, who used to know the Lord Jesus Christ, but no sooner they came to this country and they found a little bit of life, they have forgotten the Lord Jesus Christ and have turned away to walk on to the people of the flesh because they have refused to be obedient to the things of God. You know, the things of the flesh has taken over the spirituality and the Christianity that they should have. Friends, let us beware. One day I'll come back to Pastor Scott and we'll be able to preach. But I'm not preaching tonight. Brother Ben, do you want to come up and say something? I know that probably they may call you, but we may have to leave. So I'd like you to come away. Pastor Ben Covers. Now this man is a very good This man is a very educated man. It's no. good to have educated people. No, no, no. <laughs> Education <laughs> counts for nothing. <laughs> I have to say that I hold a Master of Arts, but I mean, it's in theology. Um, and it's actually in the subject of black theology. Um, may I share a little bit of my story? Not so long. Just a few minutes, three minutes. You see, um, I was intrigued when I walked into the building this evening and I heard the subject of your moderation. Uh, because you talked about the heritage of the Caribbean people and the transatlantic passage. You talked about the way in which people came and, and, and committed their lives to a new way, a new life, a new future. And they came and they faced all sorts of embarrassments. And I'm ashamed to admit that I grew up in that era. As a, as a white guy in, in the Midlands, in Derby, I worked in the factories, I worked in the, in, in the uh, basically had all sorts of things. And I saw a lot of the abuse that was directed at people. And I received abuse as well. It, remember, it wasn't the one-way street, it was a two-way street. But what I want to say to you is that your heritage is important. Yes, yes. Your traditions are important. The things that you grew up in, Pastor, the things that you learned as a child, the things that became part of you and made you who you are is important to what you are going to become. Okay. I want to tell you that you are disgusted in Heidelberg University. You are discussed in Harvard University. You are discussed in all of the great universities in this, this land. You are discussed and, and, and debated about the way in which the differences in the characteristics between the Caribbean way of worship and the white way of worship can be brought together in a unity. Because you see, the white church has the same problems today that you have in your older years, and your early years. And that is, how do you reach a people which are not your own? How do you reach someone to become Jesus? How do you tell them about Jesus to let you have a culture and a tradition? And I want to tell you that I was brought up by Caribbean parents. Yes. When I was a very young child, my father was an alcoholic. And there was a, a, a gentleman who was Caribbean, and he was married to a white lady. And he heard about the things that my father was doing. And he took me under his wing and he took me to a Caribbean school and into a brethren, Caribbean brethren Sunday school. I learned the scriptures, I learned certain things, I learned what it was to be Caribbean, but I understood what it was to be white. Yeah. And I want to tell you there is no colour in Christ. No. I want to tell you Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And if you want to understand the happening of the Spirit, understand that you have received the anointing of the Spirit. Yeah. And that you can walk in that Spirit. Praise God. In Jesus' name. Praise God. in boxes and all, oh, he's white, you can't say that, oh, they're black, you can't say that, but it's good when we can come out of our boxes and speak boxes that are apparent, because it will release us from, like, tensions and, you know, it's just necessary at the end of the day, because as I, I always say this to people, where do we get off thinking that we're better than each other anyhow? If I've got spilled, sorry to be so crude, but if all I've got spilled on the floor, ooh, well, that's a black man, ooh, that's okay, really? I don't think so. Well, it's just so silly at the end of the day, we're all human beings, yeah, all seeking to get 
into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And I'd just like to introduce our, um, uh, our pastor, Emma Doyley. I've known the Doyleys for maybe 30 years or so. And um, where we used to go to, because those of you who know Pastor Hilton, Pastor Hilton was a man that went everywhere and anywhere, and he took his daughters all over London to so many, to so many places, and that's how we got to be quite known as well. And uh, one of the uh, places he used to go to was uh, New Testament Assembly, because back in the 60s, you probably don't know this Pastor General, he used to work with your dad. Back in the 60s on the building site, because your dad was a carpenter. Amen. You knew Alright then. Mm -hmm. so, and um, you know, it was so good. And the testimony of um, Bishop Powell stood back then because my dad used to say, that man was a peaceful man, you know. Because when people used to sort of get all irate on the side, not Bishop Powell. And it's good that you, you know, could leave your legacy. And that's how we got to know um, Pastor Errol and the, the brothers. And you know, I, I can't always they like my brothers. So I'd like you to welcome Pastor Errol Errol Doyle. The Lord is here. Yeah. The presence of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere. Yeah. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere. Healed and only one came back. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I thought there was, you yeah. know, there was, uh, you know, where the other nine? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And somewhat we failed to forget where we're coming from. We just look at the now. Yes. But we got to understand that it was not for the forerunners, about our fathers, yeah. the Bishop Powell's, the Bishop Bernard's, the Ayo Smith's, yeah. the etc., the Reynolds, and you know, the Bishop Bells, and you know, yeah. that have paved the way for us. Yeah. Come on, we need to put our hands together. It's so good to see so many of you. So glad you could invite. I must apologize for my brothers not being here and other members of my church. You know, everybody's coming to it. But I thank God for Sister Snaps for coming with us tonight. Good to see you, Sister Julia. Great is your work. Come just pass it again on the key. Mercy towards me. Your loving kindness towards me. Your tender mercies I see day after day. Forever faithful towards me. You're all. Because we are coming from a mighty far away. Yes. Yeah. Oh. 
and it's all Jesus who has brought us thus far. And I know my sister is to be brief. And I'm not talking anyway, so we praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. But what I want to say to each and every one of us, I've heard some wonderful testimonies. Some people don't even realize that I know them. And I see you be part of it. But let us continue striving and pressing yes. on the upper way. Gain new heights every day. Don't keep looking on the back of the past. Right. Yeah. Look to Jesus for the fish of our feet. Right. And this is a wonderful formula that I want to leave. Right. When we walk with the Lord right. in the light of His glory, glory. what a glory yes. He shed on our way. Yes. While we do His sweet will, yes. He has been brethren, He has been with us still. Trust. Amen. Because he's a faithful father. Amen. He's a faithful father. Amen. Amen. Um, just, um, I was just saying to Julia, one of the choruses we used to sing when we were the kids. He's all.
Yeah. 